Hello, beautiful people. So I've been anxious to share with you a very special interview I did with my midwife. Um, the reason I wanted to do this was because I believe it's going to be very informative to all new parents or parents to be trying to figure out their best birthing option. Having given birth to my two sons naturally, I could honestly say it has been the most defining experience of my life. It has been the most challenging, humbling, and empowering at the same time. It was such an amazing experience. So if you've been having questions about natural birth and midwifery and trying to figure out if that option might be right for you, I hope this video helps you understand a little bit more about it and helps you have an amazing birthing experience as well. So we did have our two toddlers with us and in the room, so do excuse the babies and the baby noises. Um, and if you have any questions about Heather Hilton's practice, you could always visit her website, texasbirthcenter.com, if you are in the Austin, Round Rock, Georgetown, Texas area. And don't forget to subscribe. Hope you really like the video, and until next time. Hi everyone, so today is a very special day here at the Maeda Quiroz household because we are welcoming our friend and midwife. She's going to be assisting me and guiding me through the birth of our second son right here at home. So it's with great pleasure and great honor I introduce Heather Hilton. She hi. is, hi, she's the founder clinical director and midwife at Central Texas Birth Center. She's also the founder of Hypnobirthing. Just of Central Texas. Yes. Of Central Texas. Yes. And has been assisting birthing families since 2002. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for doing this. Oh, thanks. It's an yeah. honor. Yeah. I'm super excited to do this interview finally because mm -hmm. um, one of the main reasons is your profession is one of the oldest and most important, one of the most important ones, and yet it's a new concept to mm -hmm. a lot of people. So. Yeah, and I would say that um, midwifery has really changed over the years um, because the way historically it was granny midwives, so it was an <clears throat> older woman in the community who delivered all the babies and helped everyone when they were sick, and then the community helped her with keep up her house and um, with whatever that she needed, and then she would train her daughter, or granddaughter, and they would become midwives down the line. So now midwifery is a little bit more medical because uh, birth has become a little bit more medical. Um, we just don't live in the society where we have the granny midwife anymore. So there's more training, which actually makes things safer and is, and is good. And then there's more um, regulation, which sometimes makes things better and sometimes makes things harder. Yeah, so you do a lot more than just guiding a woman through birth and labor. Yes. I mean, what is it that you do as, as so a midwife? So we do, we do complete prenatal care from uh, preconception all the way through postpartum care. So um, sometimes we see women or families who are trying to conceive and want to know how best to support their body through that process. And then uh, once a woman is pregnant, then we do the complete prenatal care, just like if she were seeing an OB. Um, it's just a little bit different. So yeah. And then, and then obviously... The birth, we, we attend the birth and assist with that process. And I don't like to say that we deliver the baby because I feel like the mom delivers the baby. So <laughs> we usher the baby earth side. Yeah. <laughs> so for people who uh, don't really understand and, and think it's still a, ve a very dangerous thing, what would mm -hmm. you say? I would say midwives are well trained, especially in this state where we have licensing and regulations. Um, midwives assist women who are having a normal, healthy, low-risk pregnancy. So if there's a woman who's having a problem like gestational diabetes or high blood pressure, then she would not be having a birth outside the hospital with a midwife. Those women should be with physicians. My feeling about it also is that if more women who are low risk have babies outside the hospital, then the women who actually need to be in the hospital would get the quality of care that they deserve. Because right now the hospitals are so overloaded with women having births there who don't necessarily need to be in the hospital. Okay. Um, sorry. No, I guess no, that's no, that. no, no. So what motivated you to start practicing? <clears throat> well, um, I started as a childbirth educator. Um, when I had my second baby with using hypnobirthing, I had had a really difficult first birth, and so I had my second baby using hypnobirthing and had a really fantastic birth in the hospital and uh, became certified to teach hypnobirthing. And then from there, um, 
I just kind of felt called to do it. I don't know how else to say it. It wasn't something I really had planned. It just kept presenting itself to me. And um, I just felt like it was what I was supposed to do. So what is hypnobirthing? So hypnobirthing is a childbirth education method, much like Lamaze or Bradley in that it teaches the mother to relax. So what I like about hypnobirthing is that it teaches very clearly exactly the way the muscles are working during labor so that a it kind of takes the mystery out of contractions so that a woman is able to just understand what's happening to her body and feel relaxed and empowered by the process rather than feeling scared. Do you think now uh, families are opting more for natural birth than before? So it seems that way to me, but I know that I live in a little bit of a bubble, um, realistically speaking, because I deal only with natural birth. So it does seem that way to me. I feel like we're starting to see more natural birth and out of hospital birth um, in mainstream because it seems that more celebrities are choosing it, which sadly that's the way that it's becoming mainstream, but that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think that just with the, uh, the internet that people are becoming more educated about their choices and about what, what happens when you're at a hospital. And I have nothing against hospitals. I think it's, a, it's the place that you need to be if you're having a problem. But in the absence of a problem, the hospital for birth, which is a normal bodily function, is it's like killing a fly with a hammer. You just don't need to be there. Um, so I, I, do, I do think more people are choosing it, not in vast numbers, but, but it seems like there seem, there's a turning of the tide, so to speak. And in your professional opinion, what's the difference between a natural birth and a hospital delivery? Yeah, so um, usually when people think natural birth, they're thinking uh, vaginal birth without medication, which you can definitely have in the hospital. It's just a little bit more difficult because it's more impersonal. So, um, and outside of the hospital with midwives, it's a it's a much more um, emotional and personal experience. So, for instance, um, with a midwife, we spend an hour an appointment with our couples and we really get to know them and we get to know their family and just the way that we're sitting in your home right now. And, um, and so that when you're in labor, we know how to support you because we've spent all of this time with you and really know what makes you feel safe. Um, whereas when you're at the hospital, you have kind of a revolving door of nurses and whoever's on call and so nobody really knows your family or understands what's important to you and you and the person in the next room and the person in the room after that are all going to have the same experience yeah. which might not be the experience that you want to have so that's a big difference and natural or at home natural birth versus at a birthing center mm -hmm. what would be the difference well, there's not a whole lot of difference. I always say that um, having a birth at a birth center is like having a home birth at somebody else's house. Yeah. So for some reason, we have this uh, societal programming that we have to go somewhere to give birth, which is really silly because we are mammals and mammals don't go anywhere to give birth unless it's a cave or just away from other mammals so at home you can really do that you can retreat to your bedroom and just be in your safe place <clears throat> whereas at a birth center we commonly see that labor is slow down as soon as women make that transition from home to the birth center because they are having a normal mammal response to changing locations during labor so all of the equipment is the same. We bring all the same equipment to the home and the labor is managed in exactly the same way. Um, you know, we're just at a different location. Okay. Um, I also had a question for you because many women um, often say, oh, I'm too small. I can't do a natural, a natural birth mm -hmm. or, you know, they have um, all, these, all these ideas that uh, will um, hinder them from having that natural birth, what would you right. say? Well, I think it's really, again, a, some unfortunate societal programming that leads us to believe that women are, that are small stature are unable to have normal vaginal births, uh, where studies show that the only way to know if a baby is going to fit through a mother is a trial of labor. So we have no idea what's happening. And the way that a woman looks on the outside is completely different than the way her pelvis is shaped on the inside. Um, 
That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we look at a woman and we think, oh, she has childbearing hips, but that has nothing to do with what the shape of her pelvis is on the inside. So you really have no idea until a woman is in labor. And, I, and most babies fit. What is a bigger hindrance to a baby coming out um, is a malpositioned baby. And that's where, as midwives, we can palpate the mother's belly and, and help her learn what position her baby is in and help her adjust that position if the baby's not in a good position um, to get to that beautiful birth. Yeah. Whereas size really has very little to do with it. Yeah. You bring up a good point because when I got pregnant with our first son, one of my biggest concerns uh, opting for a natural birth was what if my baby was breached? Mm -hmm. How do you handle a breech baby and is it possible to give birth naturally? So it is possible to give birth naturally to a breech baby. It really depends on each practitioner's level of experience and how they wish to handle it. So in the state of Texas, it's legal for midwives to attend breech births outside the hospital. Um, it's just important to find a really uh, well-qualified provider. So um, I personally am not very experienced with breech births. So um, I, I would not choose to do a breech birth for a mom who hasn't had a baby before. Um, but for women who've had babies before, I would be willing to, if, if we had another more experienced midwife, who could come attend the birth and assist. Is it possible to turn the baby? Yes, it's totally possible to turn the baby. There are different uh, positions, homeop homeopathic remedies, chiropractic care, lots of things you can do to turn the baby. Good. Um, also, I know we had a couple of questions uh, philosophical questions yeah, too. Sure. Like, what is what is birth for for you or as as a woman and yeah. as a midwife yeah um well as a woman i feel like birth is the thing that makes us women and um, i'm also an adoptive mother so that's in no offense to women who um are unable to to give birth um but for me personally living in my body i feel that giving birth, growing a life inside of you and being able to pass that life through your body is the most essentially feminine thing that has ever been. Um, and as a midwife, birth is uh, the closest that I will ever get to seeing God, really. You know, um, I, I uh, have never struggled with my faith since becoming a midwife. Um, because I feel like I see these miracles happen every day. It's really amazing to see a human being come out of another human being who prior to that had never taken a breath and watch them circulate their blood and breathe and just literally come alive in front of your eyes is just it's breathtaking every single time it's breathtaking it does not lose its miraculous effect it's and you get to see that multiple times a month yes <laughs> yes it's amazing it is you know people say oh you have such a cool job yes and the hours suck but we do have a really cool job 